Hey guys, today we are going to explore the wonders of Eulerian paths and Eulerian circuits. You may be wondering, who is Euler and why is he so wonderful? Well, let's start with the first question. Who is Euler? In short, he's a mathematical legend. He was born on April 15 in 1707 in Basel, Switzerland, and died September 18, 1773. During his time alive, he revolutionized many fields of mathematics. More specifically, though, he came up with some cool theories about maps and how we can or cannot maneuver through these maps. Now, this all started with some bridges, seven to be exact. Now, these seven bridges connected different sections of a city that was set on both sides of the Pragel River. It had two large islands. They were connected to each other or to the two mainlands by seven bridges. Euler was perplexed by these bridges and wanted to figure out if there was a way to cross each of the bridges once and only once. Once he had exhausted all the possibilities, he came to the conclusion that there was not a solution to the problem. There was no way to cross all of these bridges once and only once. This discovery led Euler to the knowledge that allowed him to lay the foundations for graph theory. So what are these graphs that he was talking about? In simplest terms, these graphs are a bunch of dots that we will call vertices that are connected by lines that we will call edges. The number of edges that come out of each vertex is what we will call the degree of that vertex. So for example, if it has three lines or edges coming out of it, we say that it has degree three. Similarly to the seven bridges dilemma, Euler wanted to figure out a way that always worked to figure out if he could create a path or a circuit through the graph. But Euler had his own special stipulations about this. He said that in order to have an Eulerian path, you had to be able to make it through the graph by traversing each edge in the graph exactly one time. For example, like this. And he said that in order to have an Eulerian circuit, you had to find an Eulerian path that begins and ends at the same vertex. Let's see why this is true for Eulerian paths. Say you are starting at a vertex with an odd degree, like 3. Leaving the vertex uses one edge, re-entering uses another edge, and then you can leave on the last edge. This shows that you can start on an odd degree vertex. Say you are starting outside the odd degree vertex with degree 3. Going to the vertex uses one edge, leaving uses another edge, and then the last edge is used to go back to the vertex which means it must be the end of the path. This means that you cannot have odd degree vertices in the middle of the path because it would cause the path to end. Therefore, the Eulerian path requires you to start and end with odd degrees and have all even degree vertices in the middle. Now, let's think about Eulerian circuits. Since we know from the previous proof that odd degree vertices can be used to start paths, let's say that we will start our Eulerian circuit with an odd degree. Eulerian circuits have to start and end on the same vertex, so if we start on this odd vertex, we will leave the vertex using one edge, re-enter using another edge, and then we have to leave on the last edge. This means that we cannot end on the vertex that we started, so we must have to start with an even degree vertex. Since we already know from the previous proof that we cannot have any odd degree vertices in the middle of the path, this applies to the circuit for the same reasons. Therefore, the Eulerian circuit can start and end on the same vertex if all the vertices have even degrees. For our video today, we have simplified a selection of the buildings on the Andrews University campus and will attempt to figure out if there is an Eulerian path or circuit in our graph. We will use our buildings as our vertices and our sidewalks as our edges. To make the graph simpler for this project, we have modified which sidewalks we will be using. Let's say we want to go from Hamill Hall to the Science Complex, but we want to travel on each sidewalk on our way there. How would we do that? Well, we could start by going this way and then over and around and make our way around campus and try to cross each path. But at some point, we'll get to where we get to the Science Complex, but there's still a bunch of paths 
that haven't quite gotten crossed yet. Wow, so we can't make an Eulerian path from Hamel to the science complex. How do we know for sure? That is where the Eulerian path theorem comes in and helps us figure that out. Remember what you said about Eulerian paths? <laughs> oh yeah, Euler said that a graph has an Eulerian path between two vertices if and only if the degrees of both of those vertices are odd, but all of the rest are even. Exactly! So all we need to do is count the degrees of each building. Now we can see that there is no Eulerian path between Hamel and the science complex. But based on the degrees, we should be able to find an Eulerian path between Lamson Hall and Bell Hall. So now that we know that there is an Eulerian path on our campus graph, can we find an Eulerian circuit? Well, Euler said that a graph has an Eulerian circuit if and only if all of the degrees are even. We already counted the degrees and we know that two vertices have odd degrees. This means that there is no Eulerian circuit in our graph. Hmm, so what if we made a sidewalk between Lamson and Bell? That would make all the degrees even and we would have an Eulerian circuit. Let's go try out our new graph and find the Eulerian circuit. But where should we start? Since it is a circuit and it ends and begins in the same place, we can start anywhere we want. Let's start at Bell Hall. Wow, who knew that Eulerian paths and circuits were so cool? I know, right? And these theorems apply to any graph. Well, this concludes our topic for today. Thanks for watching!